Hey everybody, it's Mark here at Tessery, and I wanted to do a quick video here on Sunday night. It's the uh, 10th of September, around 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And as you can see in the screen, I added some text and green numbers of Tesla trading at around $253 um, on the Robinhood 24-hour trading market. The, the reason for this is because Adam Jonas with Morgan Stanley just upgraded Tesla. This was news dropped by Sawyer Merritt about an hour ago. And the new price target and upgrade is going to be overweight from equal weight, $400 price target from $250. And the, the stock is reacting pretty positively. I Just, you know, word of warning. We've seen these scenarios over the past week where something might happen good, be it over the weekend or after hours, that causes some type of bullishness in the in the, in the trading um, in a very illiquid trading market. And and if you want to talk about illiquid, if you think after hours is illiquid, Robinhood uh, twenty four hour trading is, is even more so um, illiquid, and it so it doesn't necessarily reflect what um, the price action will really um, be at the open tomorrow. So. The reason I'm making this video is just to kind of prepare us um, for the movement that, of the stock um, at the open, and maybe we can position ourselves to maybe take advantage of any you know quick run up, um, but or maybe this is just a start of a, a new bull run um, for Tesla. Let's go to the news real quick and actually just kind of read uh, what Sawyer posted, and this is kind of some like screenshots of what I assume are. Um, analysts and research papers that are distributed to uh, clients who subscribe to Morgan Stanley's research service. So uh, Sawyer was able to get his hands on some of these documents. And as you can see, this um, they're really focusing on AI. Obviously, that's kind of the that's the kind of the modus operandi of of, of any type of uh, bullishness in, in the market is is kind of building off momentum of AI hype. Uh, so let's just take a quick read here. It says, unlocking Tesla's AI mojo, enter the dojo, upgrade to overweight, price target 400. And this is now their top pick, by the way. And uh, just remember, it wasn't but how many months ago? It was June 23rd, okay, uh, 2023, um, that um, Adam Jonas actually pulled back the overweight um, weighting on Tesla to equal weight. And that's why this is an upgrade, um, because he felt like the exuberance from the spring and summer rally was basically worn out. He was a little bit early, so, it, but eventually he did get his move down. Um, so I guess he wasn't necessarily wrong in, in the short to medium term. So the first paragraph says, investors have long debated whether Tesla is an auto company or a tech company. We believe it's both, but see the biggest value driver from here being software and services revenue. The same forces that have driven AWS to reach 70% of Amazon's total EBIT can work at Tesla. In our view, opening up a new addressable market that extends well beyond selling vehicles at a fixed price. The catalyst? Dojo, Tesla's custom supercomputing effort in the work for the past five years, version 12 of Tesla's full self-driving system, possibly over the air by end, um, year end, and uh, Tesla's next AI day, maybe early 2024, are worth watching. We believe that Dojo can add, <clears throat> excuse me, can add $500 billion to Tesla's enterprise value, expressed through a faster adoption rate in mobility, robotaxi, and network services, SaaS. The change drives our price target increase to $400 from 250 previously. We upgrade to overweight and make Tesla our top pick. And he goes on to explain Dojo. We, look, we already know what Dojo is. Um, and he goes on to say that, you know, due to its, uh, you know, efficiency, it's possibly going to be able to train at a low cost. But he also does address the fact that they're still searching for um, more compute. He's he, in this even on third paragraph. He mentions the, the the desire to obtain as much NVIDIA GPU power as possible. Um, and so overall, this is just basically um, uh, a, a Dojo AI a realization, I guess, from Morgan Stanley. It's hard to understand that because this has been in the works for, like he said, years. And the Dojo that's working now is not going to be like the Dojo that's going to be you know, at, at what, the, the compute power that's going to be at the end of this year, augmented by what? How many, you know, how many tens of thousands of H100s that they'll eventually obtain? Um, and, and it kind of, and, and I just want to let you guys know, Dojo, yes, it, it's, a, it's a very power efficient thing. And, and, and Elon speaks to the fact that, you know, as these companies, um, not just Tesla, but all the companies in the world start really focusing on developing their data centers and really going for AI, that power is going to be a big problem. And having efficient compute is really good. But the reality is in the NVIDIA chips are just better. I mean, they're just better right now. I know Dojo 2 is, is, is kind of ramping up, um, but that just started this summer. And there is that... Uh, 
that little quote that Elon said that, you know, if he was able to get his hands on as unlimited amounts of H100s or, you know, whatever chip they're going to go for, because I know there's like these new Grace Hoppers and Grace whatever's coming out from NVIDIA, that they they would just take those and just like, you know, F it. We don't, we don't need to make Dojo. Um, but because I think it's like, I think these NVIDIA chips are just, from the memory respect, is just going to be much more superior. Um, but anyways, but anyways. I don't know. It's hard for me to to really understand how they did, they don't see how they didn't see the 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 value of full self driving, the value of uh, of the investment into Dojo. Now it could be just convenient timing on CNBC today. Um, Walt, as we all know, Walter Isaacson's releasing the biography on Elon Musk this Tuesday, and you might be able to get some early copies tomorrow. We know the New York Times somehow are able to get their hands on a full copy this weekend and are doing the usual hit pieces. So if you want to read some hit pieces on Elon, feel free to read it on the New York Times website. But uh, Walter Isaacson was allowed to, or not allowed to, but he was invited to write a article about um, Elon's uh, full self-driving um, uh, test drive from a couple of weeks ago. Also the build up to that, the kind of the transitioning from the regular C++ coded uh, full self driving uh, version 11.4 XX, whatever it's at at the moment, into that what we consider full self driving 12 alpha or beta, which is that kind of neural net based full kind of AI uh, self driving system. So, now we're not sure if this is going to be in the book or not because this just happened a couple of weeks ago, but I do believe that he's going, Walter Isaacson is going to kind of um, talk about that the transition that happened after Chat GPT. And on chat, that kind of brings up the good point. He kind of explains the behind the scenes um, action that was going on um, that the, the kind of uh, that kickstart from the ChatGPT moment for OpenAI um, was referenced here. And they kind of use that as like a kind of a, like a parallel to what they wanted to do at the um, full self-driving uh, team at Tesla. You know, they were, they're still working on that regular, you know, coded uh, version 11, you know, and, they're, and the reason why I don't think you're seeing really, you know, str- like huge advancements in, in the regular uh, hand-coded, man-coded version of, of full self-driving is because the resources are, have been really um, shifted to the AI version. And uh, if you read this article in CNBC, Walter Isaacson actually says that, you know, he has a quote from Elon saying, move your resources to this version. And he wasn't, Elon wasn't necessarily um, convinced at first. It's like, do we really need AI to do this? Um, but this could be our chat GP moment where because of this article, because of the biography that's coming out and because of the upgrade, uh, maybe you can get to the point where the, the market from, from like kind of like the institutional perspective can try to front run what could be the reality from an end, end user's perspective. It's that oh, we have access to full self-driving 12 and this is amazing and AI is actually being monetized. Now, guys, the reason there's a reason why Microsoft is not doing so great as far as stock goes. It's not just Tesla that's selling off, but, you know, Microsoft is not doing as good as even NVIDIA and, you know, Microsoft is a much more stable company and it's, and it's selling off. And I think there's a couple big mega cap names that are really getting into dangerous levels when it comes to their moving averages and, like, and the like. So... And the reason for that is because even though you know they're spending billions of dollars, you know the Meta, the Microsoft, they're spending billions of dollars on chips or even just designing their own silicon and build and having that built by TSMC probably. But the thing about it is that they're not monetizing it. And what the market is looking for is the first company to kind of really turn all that investment, that capex, and all the spend on Nvidia chips into a product and a service that makes money. And that's this is this is the this, this is what Adam Jonas is maybe seeing now that because of this kind of inside look that Walter was able to this the timing it couldn't been have it couldn't have been coincidental but regardless of that so in this highlighted quote by early 2023 the neural network planner project had analyzed 10 million clips um, collected from from cars of, of Tesla customers. Now these clips were they were fed into um, their AI system. I believe um, I want to say it was like around October to November where they started moving that direction. Just uh, just kind of oh so actually let's see here. Yep, December, December. So it was actually this this turnaround time was 
end of year last year into feeding all these millions of clips into uh, into into Dojo at the beginning of this year. And in the next highlight section is is going to be when they actually showed it to Elon for the first time. This was in April in 2023 when the team, including Ashok and three other uh, engineers, took a test drive with Elon and he was astounded by it. And he basically gave him his full blessing to continue the path of, of, of full self-driving 12, which is powered by just neural networks. And so I think that because of, this is almost like a confirmation. This is almost a confirmation for for Adam Jonas and the Morgan Stanley folks. And, and they, they're gonna get ahead of this. And, and, and the reality is, you know, if you compare Adam Jonas to other analysts, he, he's much more bullish on, on, on Tesla when it comes to like really large institutions and their research teams. Because this is obviously one of the big banks of the world. So you guys can go to Sawyer's page. He has about eight screenshots about you know the the reasoning behind this. It's really really focused on AI, um, and and the hope is that essentially Tesla is going to be the one to monetize um, AI in, in kind of a widely accepted kind of uh, kind of way. Whereas like OpenAI and Microsoft are like charging people to use like ChatGPT four and and Copilot for like you know twenty third dollars a month. That's ridiculous. Like that's not that's not how you. It's not how the market wants to see the monetization of AI. They want you to create a product and service with it that cannot be done without. And you're seeing the the you're seeing articles come out like, oh, three months in a row, ChatGPT has seen lower and lower usage, and and that's just the reality. It it was it was kind of fun at first, but then you start to realize like it's very limited. But if I want to use it in a more expansive way, then I have to pay. But how do I use how do I leverage ChatGPT to make me money? Like Maybe if you're like a self-employed person, you can use that as a way to augment your, you know, your daily life. But maybe a regular person just doesn't see it. But everyone in America basically drives. And and if you can have a car drive for you, imagine your productivity, especially if you live in areas like where I do in Southern California, where you're spending hours on the road just wasting your life away. And we can be doing something else. Right. So let's go. To, let's go to the charts. And just talk about how are we going to pair, prepare for the movement tomorrow. Now, if you were to ask people, if you ask some bullish friends of Tesla, ask ask your closest Tesla friend that follows the stock or follows the stock market in general, like what do you think the move is going to be like tomorrow? Well, firstly, before we look at some historical um, analysis based off Adam Jonas's uh, price target increases or, 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 or basically upgrades to Tesla stock, let's take a quick look at a, kind of a, a small time frame from the past couple of weeks, if you were to guess where the pricing of Tesla was at, what like what would be the most obvious level to really watch for? Of course, we're going to have more information to, in tomorrow's over, um, pre-market. Um, currently, right now in the 24-hour trading, we're around two hundred fifty-three dollars and sixty cents at uh, ten eleven p.m. Eastern time. But so I have some levels, and these are just obvious levels that have been respected before, and they're respected from basically on that sell-off and you can kind of see some wicks where you can kind of extrapolate where some other levels might be. So first, the first things first, the obvious level that we really want to look out for are the the kind of the levels that sold off um, very quickly uh, from at the end of last week, which are going to be $256 and $258. After those marks are basically hit, within one, two hours, you were seeing reversals of somewhere in the range of $10 a share. And you can see that simply in these very large red candles. Above that, above 258, it's very possible that we can maybe get close to our upper EM for the week. So the 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 the, the implied volatility for Tesla has expanded this week due to um, uh, CPI coming out this Wednesday. So basically, if there is some type of event that's happening in the week, um, the the volatility will increase. And you know the SM to move for the last couple of weeks was around four ish percent. But I would be, wouldn't be surprised for some people's calculations, that being now maybe 5%. A 5% move would take you to around $261.50. And that would also put you at, coincidentally, at the recent high from uh, the 31st of August. Okay, So that, that'll be, if you are seeing a move, okay, somewhere around $262, um, I want you to just kind of be aware of like, hey, that's, that's a nice move. Um, what do I do with that? Like, is that your opportunity once again to catch your shares, sell a call, 
because we've seen quick reversals, right? No, regardless of how whatever price target happens or whatever model is being released, like that is great for Tesla. And sure, maybe their volumes go up if they release Cybertruck in this month and, and, and maybe they can ramp that up really quick and maybe get a couple thousand trucks out per month. That's just a couple thousand trucks per month. Does that fix a situation where you know we're threatening 17% gross margin, um, auto gross margin? Are we are we are we maintaining operating margin at the very least because you know operating margin was supposed to be the focus over the last couple quarters, whatever. But basically, what I'm saying is the fundamentals of the company and the overall conditions of the of the economy will eventually bring people back down to earth if there's a strong run in Tesla tomorrow because. You can get an upgrade from an analyst and maybe see some temporary bullishness. But guys, we've seen it reverse very quickly and quickly can be one of two things. It can be one hour. It could be one or two days. And what I'm saying is that we've seen Tesla fall into its estimated move, even when it runs out of it and it's an outside week or we're thinking, oh, it's going to be an outside week. And within an hour, an outside week becomes a middling like doji uh floating right in the middle between the upper and lower, right? So basically flat. What I just want to prepare you guys, you know, there's a lot of moves that are reversed quickly until you get confirmation of that, what? Number one, inflation is done. Number two, rate hikes are not going up because those are the real things that will drive the market. And I, and I mean the market. Yes, we, you can have a slight outperformance on Tesla compared to the index, but a sustained move over the course of you know the rest of this month, that could be in real jeopardy within two days. I mean, if inflation is bad, do you think an analyst upgrade is going to keep Tesla going up when the rest of the market is selling off? It won't. PPI comes in the day after. We know retail sales, including auto sales, come on Thursday as well. So, oh, not to mention the the, the, the aforementioned biography of Elon is already becoming quite controversial. There are some really cool bullish you know, narratives though, when it comes to kind of perspectives on the next generation vehicle, we're talking about AI, we're talking about, um, the, the, of course, the, the Giga factories and their locations in the future of, you know, Giga Mexico. That's all, you know, those are all, all be really interesting things, but I just want to prepare you for the levels that you might want to watch. If you're interested in hedging your shares, hedging your positions, or if you're interested in going short, just know a sustained move of what? We want a confirmation that inflation is coming down and PPI is not cratering and we actually have a, uh, a, a basically a manufacturing sector which is destroying itself, not really destroying itself, being destroyed by the Fed. But if you look at you know survey responses from individual you know regions from like the Dallas Fed or the Philly Fed, a lot of manufacturers and a lot of employers are hurting really badly because of these rates. Now, there was an article that came up by Nick Timros. Nick, and I think I can even pull that up at the end of this video if you're interested in just kind of going over that real quickly. But I promise you guys, let's look at Adam Jonas's price targets and how it affected this stock. Sawyer mentioned that, um, Sawyer, the guy who posted the screenshots of Morgan Stanley's research from tonight, he mentioned that when Adam Jonas, who, who, who tracks Tesla stock basically constantly, he's, he's, He's kind of a bull as well. When he's seen, um, when we, when Sawyer has seen his upgrades over the years, he's he's noticed that the the bullishness is actually quite real, and it's a, it's a tangible thing. This is not something that is like a fleeting um, move. Um, but remember, these moves I'm going to show you. Like, okay, just just prepare yourself. These moves I'm going to show you. Yeah, they look amazing. But I just want to preface that these were, these moves are not in an environment where we're threatening five and a half percent interest rates on 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 treasuries that a lot of people are betting on six point two five six and a half percent rates by the the first quarter of next year. I just want you guys to see kind of from both sides. Let's take a look at some of the moves that happen after upgrades um, from Adam Jonas. Now, so the here's a recent one. This is from January two thousand twenty one. He upgrades on this day and the move, um, I would say the more short term move was a 23% move and peaked out. Um, the peak was around 25%. So this was from January uh, 5th, 2021. And within a couple weeks, you saw a 23 to 25% move. Now, here is another upgrade in November 18th, 2020. And 
this is, you know, this just looks like a straight up move. I, there's no real peak in my opinion. I would say within a period of one month, you got a 57% move and you can probably pretty much add these two together and get a, a very large um, a move of, of 104% essentially. Um, let's look at another one here. So his timing seems to be pretty good, right? This is another move um, after a upgrade from the 14th of August, 2020. And uh, within 18 days, you saw a 57% move. And here's another one from back in the day. And this is from the 5th of December, 2019. And within two months, a over, just a little over two months, um, you saw a 200, base, basically a 200% move. And it, okay, and that move was basically fully retraced within a period of time. Um, but if you were there, I'm sure you were happy for a good while. And this is, this is actually almost an amazing example of why selling calls when you can try to identify levels of, of maybe exhaustion um, that can turn your, your shares into something that will actually make you money while everyone else is losing money, right? I think it's important to realize that, um, that you have a resource at your disposal to create income for yourself when everyone else is just floundering, right? So some of these moves are very, very good. And it can happen again. Like if this move, if this upgrade just happens to coincide with inflation coming down severely this Wednesday, then yeah, you can see a move go up and Tesla go up like 70% within like two weeks. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if we open up uh, tomorrow at 4%. Like I wouldn't be surprised. I can, I, if, if we open at 4%, I can... I hope we, we've been traumatized enough to realize, okay, we're up 4%. I'm going to let it kind of marinate for about three or four minutes and maybe start taking some positions because, man, some of these reversals are so brutal. I mean, look at these things. These are Some of these are just at the open and they're just like, just gone, just gone. Like, just look at, like, look at these moves, man. Like, this is, this is horrible. We've had great news over the past couple of weeks and it completely reversed themselves, like just reversed themselves severely. And sometimes it's like, oh, we're up even just like, you know, 1% only to sell off four and a half percent. I mean, so I just want you guys to exercise some caution. There are so many examples here of gap ups to complete sell off in the cup. This move was 4.7% in two hours, in two hours. So I'm not saying it's not gonna go up. I'm just saying, I think the market to really follow through on a strong move on Tesla would really need confirmation from, from inflation. Um, the inflation report, the PPI report, I think that's gonna be very, very important to continuing a strong move or even just like to even sustain the move that you get in the open. And if you see it sustained, I, I, that would be, Honestly, that would be miraculous to me. Only because, you know, maybe because I'm suffering from PTSD uh, because of of all these quick reversals that you've seen with Tesla from the open. It's 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 um it's very comforting that, you know, institutional types are are recognizing the that, you know, Tesla is actually an ad company and they're they're now and, and I'm glad that Elon did that really risky test drive with FSD 12 beta or alpha. Um, because if something went wrong that day, oh, it would have been disastrous. And you saw that it didn't even do anything for the stock, really. So the risk reward really wasn't there. He was really doing it for for us, for you guys, to to show you guys, like, look, look, look what we're doing. You know, no one appreciates it, but we're, this is going to be the real and maybe only true AI story. That when when and when I mean real and true, something that the 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 mainstream mainstream adoption from you know end users of a product will actually subscribe to will actually spend thousands of dollars on a year and that will drive almost pure 100 percent margin um to tesla and and i remember elon was talking about it on an earnings call i believe where you know when they got when they achieved this chat gpt like moment for full self-driving that it would have been all the talk about auto gross margin would be absolutely just silly in comparison to what 
is actually happening. To end this video, let's look at Nick Timrose. Nick Timrose, also known as the Fed Whisperer. This guy has an inside track. Basically, I'm sure they just leak things through Nick. And it's a very leaky Fed anyways. But Nick is the guy. He's like the go-to guy if you kind of want to get a gauge and sentiment on what Jerome Powell is, is really thinking. Nick says in this tweet from today, Fed officials are turning more cautious about raising rates too high. Now that inflation is finally showing signs of rapid declines that they've long anticipated. A rate pause in September will give the Fed more time to see if recent progress continues. Now, we all know this is not surprising that there's a pause that's possibly going to happen next week. FOMC is going to be next week. and um, But there is kind of that X factor when it comes with inflation. Um, inflation, if it comes in too high, meaning some type of uh, beat on the consensus, then there will definitely be a possibility for a hike next week. But what I think Nick is saying with this tweet is that if you get a good inflation reading this week, I wouldn't be surprised if you see the odds for November's rate hike go down to like 25%. And I so a lot of people in the market that are like kind of reading into this, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like, you know, analysts and people of uh, big institutions, they, they, they're, they're, they're responding to this very simple tweet and article with the idea that maybe the November rate hike isn't a sure thing as long as inflation is okay this Wednesday. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. And I'm sorry, I really wanted to be short. I don't think it's short, but anyways, have a good night and good luck to us tomorrow. Bye.